It's Drone Tip Tuesday, and I'm going to show you how to do the perfect orbit. An orbit is a move where the drone rotates around a subject, giving you a great view. It's perfect for establishing shots or just showing the action in a more interesting way than a static shot. I know your app will allow you to do it automatically, but I kind of hate that. Because first you're giving up control of your drone and I'd rather be able to adapt to changing conditions than just having an app do it. But also the app takes kind of a long time to set up and I can do an orbit with these steps much, much quicker and that means I get the drone in the air and then back down in less time keeping my drone safer, keeping everybody safer. So step one is to pick your operating altitude. Fly out at the distance and altitude that you want and decide what angle you're going to get. Usually lower is gonna be better. People will go way up in the air, but I like to see the line of the subject breaking the horizon. Leave yourself a little room to crop, since especially these DJI gimbals tend to be a little off level. So when you do level it in post, you're gonna to have to crop in a little bit tighter than you might've been expecting. Next, you're gonna pick where you're going to start your orbit. Think about your drone rotating around the subject in that big path. Go a little farther beyond the original extreme so that you have a chance to get your sticks all perfectly calibrated before you actually start the uh, shot that you want to use in your final production. For example, if you want to start your shot here, start by flying back here. Now that you're in your starting position, hit record and start moving. You're recording early, but the process of hitting the record button will actually jar your controller a little bit and that in turn might shake your drone a little bit and we want the shot to be as smooth as possible and it's easy to trim off the end in post-processing. Now you're going to move the right stick to one side or the other depending on which direction you want to rotate. The right stick is going to determine the speed of your rotation. You don't want it to be too fast or too slow. And I know that's kind of vague. The closer you are to the subject, the slower you're going to be. And the farther you are from the subject, the faster you're going to need to be to show any kind of rotation. But if you're going too fast, then it's going to look like a drone shot and the movement of the drone itself is going to be distracting people from the shot. And of course, it's not about the drone, but about the subject you're filming. So err on the side of being a little too slow. Now that you got the right stick in motion, you're just going to hold it there. You're gonna work the left stick now and push it in the opposite direction. So if the right stick is going right, the left stick is gonna go left. And if the right stick is going left, then the left stick is gonna go right. Either they'll both be in the inside or the outside of the controller. Push the left stick just as far as you need to keep your subject centered in the frame as your drone is moving left to right. If you do this just right, the drone will be the same distance from you throughout its entire orbit and your subject will be in the middle of the frame the entire time. This takes a little bit of getting used to. When you first start flying, you'll see that uh, the subject might shift in the frame a little bit to the left or right. That just means you need to adjust the left stick a little bit to speed up or slow down the rotation to match the movement of the drone. It takes some practice. So before you actually plan to film anything, get out there, Try just orbiting around yourself someplace where you have plenty of open space. Try it at different distances and different speeds because it really is a matter of just developing that sort of muscle memory in your hands. Now that you've figured out where the sticks need to be, hold them still. Hold them still for at least 10 to 15 seconds. Most of the time when I include a drone shot in a video, it's anywhere from three to six seconds, but I like to leave myself a little extra room. Plus you might say do a crossfade, which might burn an extra second on either end of the clip. Nobody ever complained about having too much footage, but lots of people complained about not having enough footage. The next step is to repeat that three to four times. I, I know it might've looked completely smooth to you, but by the time you get it back and you look at that awesome 4K footage on your big old 4K monitor, you're gonna start to see some little uh, problems with it. In post, for the final step, you can correct some of those problems. If you find that your subject slid a little bit to the left or the right, you can crop the entire thing and then move that crop to keep them centered in the frame. As long as you kept the sticks completely still, you should be able to fix minor little inconsistencies to give yourself that perfect orbit. Subscribe to this channel to see lots more tips. If you have any additional tips or you, you have requests for our next Drone Tip Tuesday, write a comment down below. Give me a like and uh, click that notification bell so you know the next time we do something. Oh, you know what would help too? Look what I just found on this bench. What a, what a coincidence. Somebody's reading the number one 
best-selling photography book in the world, Stunning Digital Photography. You really need to learn the basics of photography, things like camera settings, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, as well as lighting, planning a shot, you know, what time of day you're going to go out, how are you going to determine whether you have front lighting or back lighting and what things work best. Uh, composition really will make a huge difference in your in your droning. Way more than just upgrading to the latest and greatest drone. Uh, Ten bucks for the ebook. Thanks. Bye.